All right, what about when your inequality start to look a little bit crazy? Okay. First thing you want to do is get the x on the same side, usually on the left. So I notice that I have a 2x and a 4x. The 2x is on the right. I'm going to move it to the left. I notice that that's a positive 2x with a different term. So I'll subtract 2x on both sides. 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to. That's a negative 3. Remember, whenever I add or subtract, my symbol of inequality stays the same. Right? Almost have that x by itself. I have a positive 7 subtracted. 2x less than or equal to negative 10. I'm dividing by positive 2, so nothing has changed here for my symbol. My symbol stays the same, and that is a negative 5. Okay. Uh, sometimes I get questions like, oh, what if that's a negative? That doesn't matter. It's what you are doing. You are dividing by a positive 2, so since it's positive, my symbol stays the same. All right. Now, what about something like this? Notice that I have an x in the middle and I have less than symbols on both sides. Now, these were always my favorite because I get to work at three sides at the same time. Now, notice what I'm going to have to do here. If I just had this, I would add two to both sides. But there's something happening here on the left side. So, notice what I'm going to have to do. Add 2 to both sides and add 2 to this side also. So notice that I'm working on three sides at the same time. Okay, And so I don't get confused. I like to just go in order from left to right. So here, I'm going to have a negative 3. I add it by a, a 2. Adding and subtracting doesn't do anything, so I'll bring down my symbol as it is. Bring down that 3x. That's gone. Less than 3. Okay. Once again, notice that if I just had this, I would divide by 3 to get that x by itself. So that's exactly what I'll do. Divide by 3, but also do it to the other side. I end up getting negative 1 is less than x less than one. Notice that here I'm telling you that my answer is between these two numbers. Okay, It's almost like a sandwich. This is what you end up getting with less than symbols on both sides. Let's look at a different scenario. Alright, let's look at what I'm going to do here. Here, notice that I still have the less than symbols, but uh, looks like I have a giant fractions, one big term right now. For me to get rid of that denominator, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. Now remember, normally I would just multiply this and this whole thing by 2. But I also have that side to worry about. So, multiply all of this by 2, this by 2, and this by 2. So let's see what happens. I end up getting negative 2 less than or equal to 3 minus 5x less than or equal to 18. All right. I always save this term for last. I'll get rid of that positive 3 by subtracting 3 to all three sides. Negative 5 less than or equal to negative 5x less than or equal to 15. Notice that here I need to divide by negative 5 on all three sides. It says you're dividing by a negative. I need to switch these symbols. Okay, so this becomes 1 greater than or equal to x greater than or equal to negative 3. What you can do here is that you sh your answer is still between these two numbers. Formally, though, we never write it like that. So what you can do is 
flip the whole thing around so that the negative 3, the x, and the 1 are here. Now think about it, you just flipped everything that includes your inequality symbols. So here, I will once again flip this around. The reason why that works is, once again, let's use regular numbers. 3 is less than 4. If I decided to switch these two, 4 and 3, I would be lying if I kept that same symbol, if I wrote less than. So I need to switch it so it says that 4 is greater than 3. That's exactly what I just did here. Okay? And it makes sense. Look, in these problems, your smaller number should be on the left side. Negative 3 is less than my answers, and my answers are less than or equal to 1. That's exactly how it should say your smallest number and your greatest number. All right, let's go ahead and try this one out. Now here, you, right now you technically only have two terms, the 4 and the 3 times 1 minus x. Okay, this is considered one big term right now. So, I noticed that my x is in this term. I'll go ahead and get rid of that 4 first. Minus 4, minus 4, negative 3, 1 plus x, less than or equal to negative 1. Now, I could go ahead and distribute this 3 right now. That actually makes it longer uh, for me to work. What I can do is divide, because look, this just says negative 3 times all of that. So I could just divide by negative 3 on both sides. Notice that this stays the same. So I end up getting 1 minus x, 1 third. What happens to this? I flip it. To get that x by itself, I'll subtract 1, so minus 1, minus 1. Notice that that's a negative x, okay? That's where people are going to make the mistakes, uh, forgetting about the negative x. So negative x greater than or equal to, that ends up being negative 2 thirds. Notice that this is a negative x. Technically, what you have here is a negative 1. So you can divide both sides by negative 1 or multiply both sides by negative 1. So notice that no matter what, I'll be either multiplying or dividing by negative. So I need to switch my symbol. And then finally, switch that negative 2 thirds. There you go. All right, last one, and then I'll give you guys some problems to try. Now here, what they're gonna to try to do is try to throw everything that you've learned so far to solve an inequality. Okay. Notice that they weren't bad, but they'll start looking crazier just because they're mixing everything else in there. Okay. We know how to do this. Remember, we try to get that x by itself, usually on that left side. So what I'll do is that I'll begin to foil. x squared plus x minus x minus 1 is greater than, same thing, x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 12. Let me start moving some x's and uh, combining like terms. Actually, let me combine like terms first on both the left and then the right side. I get x squared, notice that that's deleted, minus 1 is greater than x squared plus x minus 12. I'm going to go ahead and move both my x's at the same time. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. 
if you only move one at a time, it's the same thing. Um, but I feel a little gutsy today, so I'll move them both at the same time. Notice that this is gone. That, that minus X doesn't combine with anybody. There's no like terms for it to go with. So I'll just bring it down exactly as it is. Minus X minus one greater than this is gone. This is gone. I just have a minus 12 here. So notice that in one swoop, I made this look a lot cleaner and it looks like something that we were working with before. That X is not by itself though, I'm gonna get rid of that one by adding one to both sides, negative X greater than negative 13. Remember, it's like you are dividing by negative one and this says X is less than 13. And that's my final answer here. Let's go ahead and try some out for you guys. All right, go ahead and write these problems down. I'm gonna give you the answers in five, four, three, two, one. All right, here are your answers. I hope you got them right. Here, don't forget you should have multiplied everything by four. Here, once you move that one, notice that you have to get rid of that negative one over two. You can do it by two ways. You can divide by negative one over two or you can multiply by its reciprocal. You can multiply by negative two. Notice that either way you will be either multiplying or dividing by negative, so your symbols switch, and then what you have to do is switch back. Here, don't forget to foil. And here what I would do is distribute this X and expand this. Okay, so you actually end up foiling, or if you know the shortcut, go ahead and use the shortcut uh, to do this. And then just get the X on the left side. I'll see you guys next time. Good luck.